All right. Let me ask you, do you now go to your uh, news sites and look at the daily events, current events that are taking place, and do you sometimes feel like, well, do you just sit there and kind of like look at the headline and go, hmm, do I laugh or do I cry? What is the appropriate response to the unbelievably insane, crazy, surreal, evil that we are living? Disease X, World Health Organization issues global alert for potential pandemic. Now, we know an awful lot of the propaganda that we receive is to induce fear. And why do they use that kind of propaganda? Because it works. Because when you are ignorant about what is taking place, you come across these headlines and you believe them. But I have to say, I'm going to be reading a little bit of the history of the United States experimentation. You know, their uh, bio-warfare, their experimentation on uncon unconsenting people around the world, not just Americans. Yes, we are the evil empire. We've got to acknowledge that we are the evil empire that we have been so trained to fear for decades and decades. Uh, yeah, God. That has to be faced. You know, I don't sit here and think of ways that I could possibly offend some people by what I say. Many get very offended when I say, ah, no, sorry guys, Iran, Iran, uh, North Korea, Iraq. They were not the evil empire. We are. We are. Well, we have been from the start. So, you know, unless people really face the truth, of what this country has been about, then the evil will just persist and get worse. Okay, uh, so now we got disease X with the World Health Organization issuing this alert. Now, we all know the World Health Organization, all of these organizations, institutions, they have been created to put out the information that is necessary for the globalist to bring in this new world order. All right, what, when you have that kind of knowledge, it allows you to read these kinds of articles differently. Now, when you know the evil that has been committed by your own people, your own military, your own government, you also read it with, hmm, well, they could be unleashing disease X upon the world to kill off millions of people. So you don't read it as if it's completely fake. You just read it with a different perspective. Like, okay, this may very well happen, or they may just be doing that, hey, hey, everybody, sit on the edge of your seat and be scared. Be scared. Be scared all the time. It's very easy to manipulate people who are fear-based. But let me, let me just, okay, disease X. Here we go. Um, yeah, oh, well, Australia, you guys are having a severe flu sweeping your country this year. You know, Big Pharma is going to be on disease X. Hey, disease X. We got to make a vaccine. It's kind of like what they do with the flu, right? So they need at least seven months to create a vaccine for the flu. But it's known that they're creating a vaccine for this unknowable flu strain. So people line up to get a vaccine, to get injected with dangerous poisons, live viruses, but it's known that that vaccine may not be the vaccine for the flu strain of that year. They'll line up to get a vaccine for disease X, knowing that Big Pharma has no idea what the disease is. 
The World Health Organization has a list of diseases which pose a serious outbreak threat, Ebola, loss of fever, CCHF, hemorrhagic, hemorrhagic, I'm pronouncing that wrong, fever, um, the Nepal, the Nepal, Nepal, okay, I'm not doing this video over. Yes, we, no one is perfect and I don't care that you hear my idiocy or whatever, um, but pronunciation lately, Jesus, I see something, an unfamiliar word, and it's like the letters just kind of like merge together. So, all right, let me just say this, this virus or disease, mess, SARS, Zika, I like easy words. Okay. Now a high level meeting of the world's best medical scientists has added another to the high risk list. And this, it's not, it's not just mother nature. No, it's, it's not at all mother nature. It's, it's not this new organism that we have seen that kind of is created naturally or by deforestation, close contact between humans and animals. No, it's nothing like that at all. It's actually chemical warfare. Chemical warfare. It's on the rise, it, both on the battlefield and in international espionage. And a series of deadly new diseases have recently been deliberately created through gene editing, and the world's not in a good position to respond to such a surprise. The next big outbreak will be something we have not seen before. That, that you can bank on <laughs> with these unbelievably evil psychopathic nut jobs. And many of them are right here in the U.S. of A. Yes, Fort Detrick, our bio warfare labs, we, we have created so many deadly viruses, bacteria in our chemical bio warfare labs. And we've unleashed them time and time again. So get it. We have to face the truth of who we are before anything will ever change. And I'll link below to these articles. I just read this and it was just a couple of weeks ago. Yes, the United States used biowarfare on North Korea. What we did in North Korea, the atrocities that our military, our government has created all over the world is extraordinary. And it's extraordinary how long Americans have refused to acknowledge our truth. Instead, there is rampant narcissism, collective narcissism, in which a whole people point their finger and blame someone else, scapegoat someone else, so that we never have to blame ourselves and take responsibility. No, we're perfect. We are. We are morally superior to all people all over the world. We are. Hey, USA, 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 number one. Hey, hey. And all evidence points to the opposite of that, but no, just like an individual narcissist, Americans on the whole exhibit the same behavior collectively. Nope, I won't ever accept that I am not perfect. Nope, it's someone else. I will project my evil onto someone else because I don't have the strength, I don't have the courage 
to face the truth. I have participated in the evil. I am a part of the evil empire. Yes, self-deluded believers in the goodness of the United States. Well, you can read all about what we did in North Korea, the chemical warfare. You could read this short article, The Most Evil U.S. Government Experiments on Humans. You could put in YouTube in the search bar, U.S. Secret Experimentation, and come up with countless videos on the most disturbing human experiments performed in the United States, the secret human experiments of the U.S. government and military, and the list is long. And not just Americans, Canadians, Guatemalans, oh, well, people all over the world. Here, a history of U.S. secret human experimentation. Now, I'm going to read a lot of this. So if you don't want to listen any longer, just click on the link below and read it yourself. 1931, Dr. Cornelius Rhodes. Wow, the founder of, you know, that Rhodes Scholar thing. So many people look at Rhodes Scholars, like Clinton, and, and that Rachel Maddow, and just because they're Rhodes Scholars, they're just wowed by them. <gasps> You're so smart. And they don't understand the indoctrination that they go through. And they come out as these New World Order puppets. Knowledge is very important. Because without it, you can unwittingly put yourself right on the side with evil, complicit with all of the evil. So, Rhodes, under the auspices, of the Rockefeller Institute for Medical Investigations infects human subjects with cancer cells. He established the U.S. Army Biological Warfare Facilities in Maryland, Utah, and Panama, and is named to the U.S. Atomic Energy Commission. While there, he begins a series of radiation exposure experiments on American soldiers and civilian hospital patients. 1932, the Tuskegee syphilis study, 200 black men diagnosed with syphilis are never told of their illness, are denied treatment, and instead are used as human guinea pigs in order to follow the progression and symptoms of the disease. They all subsequently die. 1935, the pellagra incident, after millions of individuals die from pellagra, over a span of two decades, the U.S. Public Health Service finally acts to stem the disease. The director of the agency admits it had known for at least 20 years that pellagra is caused by a niacin deficiency, but failed to act since most of the deaths occurred within poverty-stricken black populations. And yes, there have been particular populations, particular segments of our population that have been deliberately attacked for a long time. And the black population, well, that's been number one. And yes, we also have to acknowledge that truth and stop pretending that you know, that that didn't occur and and is still occurring in many instances although now we all get to experience it 194400 prisoners in chicago are infected with malaria 
in order to study the effects of new and experimental drugs. 1942 Chemical Warfare Services begins mustard gas experiments on approximately 4,000 servicemen. You know, it has been known that our military men and women, the rank and file, the guinea pigs. How is it that so many sign up? When, when your own uh, superiors are conducting experiments on you, injecting you with vaccines, and so many of you become ill. How is it that so many just continue to sign up for this? 1943, in response to Japan's full-scale germ warfare program, the U.S. begins research on biological weapons at Fort Detrick, Maryland. 1945, Project Paperclip is initiated. The U.S. State Department, Army Intelligence, and the CIA recruit Nazi scientists and offer them immunity and secret identities in exchange for work on top secret government projects in the United States. Yes, we are the Fourth Reich here in the U.S. of A. 1945 Program F is implemented by the U.S. Atomic Energy Commission. This is the most extensive U.S. study on the health effects of fluoride, which was the key chemical component in atomic bomb production. One of the most toxic chemicals known to man, fluoride, it is found, causes marked adverse effects to the central nervous system, but much of the information is squelched in the name of national security because of fear that lawsuits would undermine full-scale production of atomic bombs. <laughs> so let's just put it in their water. 1946, patients in Virginia, in the VA hospitals, I'm sorry, are used as guinea pigs for medical experiments. Allay suspicions, in order to allay suspicions, the order is given to change the word experiments to investigations or observations when reporting medical studies. 1947, U.S. Atomic Energy Commission began administering intravenous doses of radioactive substances to human subjects. And 99.9% .9 of this experimentation was done without the consent of those who were chosen to participate in these experiments. 1947, CIA begins to study LSD as a potential weapon. Human subjects, both civilian and military, are used with and without their knowledge. 1950, Department of Defense begins plans to detonate nuclear weapons in, des in desert areas and monitor downwind residents for medical problems and mortality rates. Hey, we are morally superior, aren't we? 1950, in an experiment to determine how susceptible an American city would be to a biological attack, the U.S. Navy sprays a cloud of bacteria from ships over San Francisco. Many residents become ill with pneumonia-like symptoms. 1951, Department of Defense begins open air tests using disease producing bacteria and viruses tests last through 1969 and there is concern that people in the surrounding area have been exposed 1953 u.s military releases clouds of zinc cadmium sulfide gas over st louis minneapolis maryland virginia in Leesburg and um, Winnipeg, Fort Wayne, they wanted to determine how efficiently they could disperse chemical agents. 1953, joint Army, Navy, CIA experiments are conducted in which tens of thousands of people in New York and San Francisco are exposed to the airborne germs. 1953, CIA initiates Project MK Ultra, which is 11-year uh, 
research designed to produce and test drugs and biological agents that would be used for mind control and behavior modification. MK Ultra did not cease. They did not stop that program. So many people believe Congress, oh, those hearings, they stopped all of that. No, they didn't. They just called it different names and they um, they did all of the funding manipulation through different agencies. It continued and all of the results that they got, those results that proved successful for that mind control, that behavior modification, they're now applying those chemical agents, those biological agents. Two, not just Americans, but people around the world. 1955, the CIA, in an experiment to test its ability to infect human populations with biological agents, releases a bacteria withdrawn from the Army's biological warfare arsenal over Tampa Bay, Florida. 1956, U.S. military releases mosquitoes infected with yellow fever over Savannah, Georgia and Avon Park, Florida. Army agents posing as public health officials test victims for effects. And guess what? Now, with the technology that they have, they can get all the data they want because everything, all of those medical records go to government and they are writing down the effects that they are, uh, that, that patients are reporting to doctors, how they're feeling, what they're feeling, what they're saying, and it's the effects of microwave frequencies, it's the effects of uh, the aerosol spraying. Nothing has changed. When you don't confront evil and stop it in its tracks, when you have a lot of good people sitting around doing nothing, that evil continues and flourishes and begins to, well, pull a very dark cover over life itself. 1965, Project CIA and Department of Defense begin Project MK Surge, a program to develop a capability to manipulate human behavior through the use of mind-altering drugs. 1965, prisoners at the Holmesburg State Prison in Philadelphia are subjected to dioxin, the highly toxic chemical component of Agent Orange used in Vietnam. The men are later studied for development of cancer. 1966, CIA initiates Project MK Often a program to test the toxicological effects of certain drugs on humans and animals. 1966, U.S. Army dispenses Bacillus, Bacillus subtilis variant Niger throughout the New York City subway system. All right, well, it's a bacteria. Um, more than a million civilians are exposed when Army scientists drop light bulbs filled with the bacteria onto ventilation grates. 1967, CIA and Department of Defense implement MK Naomi, the successor of MK Ultra, and designed to maintain, stockpile, and test biological and chemical weapons. 1968, CIA experiments with the possibility of poisoning drinking water by injecting chemicals into the water supply of the FDA in Washington, D.C. 1969, Department of Defense requests from Congress 10 million to develop within five to 10 years a synthetic, synthetic biological agent to which no natural immunity exists. Hey, disease X, did I say that they don't know what it is? They don't know what the pathogen is. They have no cure for it. Um, <laughs> North Korea stands accused of using a nerve agent to kill the brother of their leader. 
Kim Jong Un. Oh God, we're so sick, and how we blame everybody else. Yes, this is the result of gene editing technology. What do you think? What do you think has been going on in our U.S. biological warfare labs? Oh, we kill children regularly, regularly, every day. Ah, to hell with it. Who cares? I didn't you hear that woman that was a secretary of state under Clinton? What the hell was her name? Oh God, I can see her face. Wow, can't remember her name. Okay, memory failing. Ooh, chemical warfare has been unleashed on the United States for so long. The effects are already well. This this environment that has become so toxic has taken such a toll. So many are losing their short-term memory. Madeline Albright, thank you. Whew, that was hard. That was a dig deep. I'm exhausted now. Um, yeah, yeah. 500,000 Iraqi children. It was worth to, it was worth it. It was worth killing them. Because hey, we have interests. And our interests come first, just like the good old individual narcissist. Me, 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 and I don't care who I kill off. The chemical weapons that we accused Assad of using in Syria. <laughs> it's a joke. Americans, the ordinary American, on the whole, I don't mean everybody. Clearly, I'm not talking about you. You guys know. You guys have put in, the, you know, the time, the effort, the energy to do the research to find out what's happening in the world. But most Americans still refuse. They still adamantly uh, declare their right to remain willfully ignorant. But no, we're good. We're good. So they lie through their teeth. They outright lie about who they are, who our government is, who this country is. And they allow the evil to continue. They allow children to end up just like this child in this picture. So, 1970 funding for the synthetic biological agent is obtained. The project under the supervision of the CIA is carried out by the Special Operations Division at Fort Detrick, the Army's top secret biological weapons facility. Speculation is raised that molecular biology techniques are used to produce AIDS-like retroviruses. Yes, AIDS was bio-warfare. So is Lyme disease. 1970, U.S. Uh, United States intensifies its development of ethnic weapons designed to selectively target and eliminate specific ethnic groups who are susceptible due to genetic differences and variations in DNA. 1975, the virus section of Fort Detrick Center for Biological Warfare Research is renamed the Frederick Cancer Research Facilities and placed under the supervision of the National Cancer Institute. It is here that a special virus cancer program is initiated by the U.S. Navy, purportedly to develop cancer-causing viruses. It is also here that retrovirologists uh, isolate a virus to which no immunity exists. It is later named HTLV, human T-cell leukemia virus. 1978, experimental hepatitis B vaccine trials conducted by the CDC began in New York, Los Angeles, San Francisco. Ads for research subjects specifically ask for promiscuous homosexual men. 1981, first cases of AIDS are confirmed in homosexual men. Ha, huh, ha, huh, New York. Los Angeles, San Francisco, triggering speculation that AIDS may have been introduced via the hepatitis B vaccine. And isn't it interesting that they inject 
infants, newborns. Hey, welcome to the world. Let me give you a shot of vaccine of hepatitis B. Welcome to the world. A world that is so evil. Your first moment here, hepatitis B. That's what they're doing to newborns. And they claim that baby boomers, what, what is it? That we've got to get checked for hepatitis C or B? Because they've injected it. They've injected these viruses into you. They've injected dangerous bacteria into you. And they can actually take from a dormant stage within your body and bring it live through the use of the frequencies the microwave frequencies. 1986, a report to Congress reveals that the U.S. government's current generation of biological agents includes modified viruses, naturally occurring toxins, and agents that are altered through genetic engineering. Oh, disease X, gene editing, um, to change immunological character and prevent treatment by all existing vaccines. 1987 Department of Defense admits that despite a treaty banning research and development of biological agents, it continues to operate research facilities at 127 facilities and universities around the nation. 1990, more than 1,500 six-month-old black and Hispanic babies in Los Angeles are given an experimental measles vaccine that had never been licensed for use in the United States. <clears throat> CDC later admits that parents were never informed that the vaccine being injected to their children was experimental. And parents still line up to have their kids injected. 1994, the Anderson Cancer Center in Houston, Texas, discovers that many returning Desert Storm veterans are injected with an altered strain of microplasma inconitis, I don't know, a microbe commonly used in the production of biological weapons incorporated into its molecular structure is 40% of the HIV protein code, indicating that it had been man-made. 1994, Senator John D. Rockefeller issues a report revealing that for at least 50 years, the Department of Defense had used hundreds of thousands of military personnel in human experiments and for intentional exposure to dangerous substances. Materials included mustard and nerve gas, ionizing radiation, psychochemicals, hallucinogens, and drugs used during the Gulf War. And so when people hear people like John D. Rockefeller and he comes out with a report revealing this information, then people put him on the good side. <gasps> wow, thank you, Rockefeller. You're so wonderful. You donate to so many NGOs and you donate all over the place. You're so charitable. And you're so about the truth. They don't understand that they appoint people to release these reports so that they get that response from an awful lot of people. They get an awful lot of people to trust the Rockefeller Foundation. Trust John D. Rockefeller. Not understanding that it's Rockefeller who's funding this, this bio-warfare. The narcissists, the psychopaths, are very good. They really know how to manipulate people. They really know how to twist up <laughs> the just all of their incredibly evil actions to make themselves look good. 1995, U.S. government admits that it had offered Japanese war criminals and scientists who had performed human medical experiments, salaries, and immunity from prosecution in exchange for data on biological warfare research. Now, the Japanese really were into their experiments. 
by anybody who showed any kind of promise of success in creating all of these these uh, biological weapons. What did we do? Hey, come over here. We'll give you lots of money. We'll give you immunity. We'll give you a new identity. You can live a sweet life. Just keep doing those experiments so that we can we can take what you have applied and use it. 1995, Dr. Garth Nicholson uncovers evidence that the biological agents used during the Gulf War had been manufactured in Houston, Texas and Boca Raton, Florida and tested on prisoners in the Texas Department of Corrections. 1996, Department of Defense admits that Desert Storm soldiers were exposed to chemical agents. 1997, 88 members of Congress signed a letter demanding an investigation into bioweapons use and Gulf War syndrome. So this was written, oh God, while well, the copyright is 1998-2000, it's now 2018. The list of experiments that continued after 1997, no doubt, is as long as this list. We have to face the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. The truth is very demanding. The truth is quite painful. But the truth is inclusive of all. It's not selective. So those who are on this, you know, believing that they're on this truth path, seeking the truth, you've got to seek all of it, no matter how evil and dirty and hard it is to face. The truth about oneself, the truth about a people, that is the most important truth because if you don't get there then you'll take all the truth that you're learning but you won't be able to become active in the fight against the evil. You'll just sit back and continue to learn about all of these current events and somewhere you still have that belief that you're good you know and I'm, t I'm talking about the collective no we're not good we are the ones who are unleashing all of these incredibly deadly infectious diseases and viruses all over the world so how could you possibly fight an evil enemy when you haven't yet acknowledged who that enemy is?